Hello folks, this is Glenn Guy, your travel photography guru. This short presentation will talk about an upcoming night photography workshop I'm running in the city of Melbourne. The workshop will be held on Tuesday the 7th of January 2014. We'll be meeting on Princess Bridge, uh, St Kilda Road, between Flinders Street and the Arts Centre, on the same side of the road as the Arts Centre. We'll meet from 8pm and the workshop will start officially from 8.30, though the light should be good around 8 o'clock so folks who can get there on time will um, have the benefit of practising and having quite a bit of one-on-one uh, -on -one, um, tuition with me uh, prior to the workshop officially commencing at 8.30. Now I thought I'd include a couple of shots from a, a recent workshop I ran. Um, although I'm there primarily to teach, I do manage to shoot uh, a few images when I can. And here's some examples. Um, I used Canon 5D Mark II for the following photographs with a Canon 24-105 f4 L-series lens. The ISOs varied from 100 to 800. And the shutter speeds, of course, varied in relation to the light and um, the ISOs and apertures that were used. Um, the point, though, really is that although it's ideal to have a tripod for night photography, it's possible to make photographs without a tripod just by extending your, uh, extending your ISO. So this shot's made um, at dusk. The sun has actually set and there's a little bit of uh, warmth remaining in the sky. Just a little bit later into twilight, and um, we've now seen the the lovely mix between the the natural or ambient light together with the artificial lights. Looking down onto the Yarra River uh, with South Bank on the uh, left hand side of the frame. So as I mentioned, the tripod is very um, handy, though not essential for uh, this workshop. So by, by all means, don't feel that you've, you, know, you need to go out and purchase one prior to the workshop. In fact, I would argue that it's more important to get the image than it is to have you know, an image that's 100% uh, sharp. Because really, when it comes to things like sharpness, that, that takes very much a, a subservient uh, position compared to the emotional aspects of the image. And when it comes to judging success, from a viewer's point of view, from a consumer's point of view, sharpness is by no means their, um, their um, top priority. If you have a fixed lens, that is a prime, uh, a non-zoom lens, that will allow more light in and uh, that's one way to ensure that your shutter speeds don't drop so slow that you get camera movement. Um, but most folks, of course, won't have one. But that might be something you consider purchasing down the track. And there's a couple on the market for the main uh, brands of cameras that are actually very, very affordable. So here's a structure by the Yarra River, um, which is a, a fantastic uh, sculpture called Angel. Um, I think more commonly referred to as the dinosaur dog-like thing. Um, but it's beautiful and uh, it's lovely to photograph it at dusk as, as is the case here or then a little bit later as the, um, the uh, night sky fades into blackness as we see here. So one of the great things about photographing at this time of day is once the sun's gone down you, you tend to work at a slower pace because you're no longer chasing the light and you tend to work a particular location or subject possibly a bit longer than you otherwise would and that allows you to photograph it under varying light sources. It also encourages you to move around and look at um, photographing from different perspectives. So what we'll be photographing will be uh, sunset and uh, the afterglow. Um, we'll be photographing um, along the Yarra River various buildings and structures uh, in the South Gate and um, Federation Square, Birrung Ma area. Uh, we may also get a chance to do some portraits, whether that be of um, strangers or whether it be of um, people participating in the workshop. We'll get to photograph lots of shapes and textures, um, potentially movement um, and reflections. 
The weather uh, will have a lot to do, of course, with determining the light, and it's the light that really determines what we photograph. So I, I'm very aware of the possibilities in the area, but I leave the um, exact details as to what and exactly where we go uh, up till the conditions, and, uh, you know, we adapt. And that's the fun of it. Um, we'll be able to photograph the dualities, the, the, the contrasts of light and dark, hard and soft, air and ground. Now that might sound a little bit airy fairy, but as well as just photographing, you know, buildings, you get to tell a story about that building through your photography, to uh, uh, voice an opinion, to explore a concept. And uh, that's really where photography starts to move in towards the world of art. One way to, to, to think through that is to, to consider the words reality, suggestion and abstraction. Um, and these are things that you know I write about on my, my blog, travelphotographyguru.com, quite a lot. Um, metaphor is another, uh, another area that's um, wonderful to explore. And you know I'm happy to have one-on-one -on -one conversations on the, uh, the night to help folks understand this stuff if they're interested. It's a very straightforward uh, photograph. So I guess you'd call that a documentary image. It's basically photographing the reality that's there. Same subject matter, a very different approach, and you get a very different reading. So, you know, what is this image now? What's it about? It's not so much about what was photographed. It's more about concepts of time and motion and abstracting it even further. Very, very simple technique. Um, just to illustrate that point, that we can move away from um, what we see, I suppose, um, into um, how we feel about what we see. And that's, I think, when we start to take photography to the next level, beyond basic, basically recording what's in front of us. So, yeah, the key really is um, to move ever towards a more personal approach to what we're photographing. And I think we can look at making images that tell stories, look for iconic images and fleeting moments. We have to, of course, be able to respond quickly with our camera gear to be able to do that. To focus on uh, the intimate as much as the grand vista, to be able to isolate uh, particular subjects from their environment, uh, and also to be able to include the subject with its, within its environment to uh, tell a particular story. And a great way to work on composition is through moving, that is, um, zoom with your feet rather than just by zooming um, with the, uh, the lens. Because once you start to move forwards and backwards, <laughs> it's not such a big um, jump then to be able to move left and right, <laughs> up and down, and, and thereby changing perspective, um, which changes the way something photographs in relation to its environment. It also changes the direction of the light on the subject, and that reveals the subject in a completely different light, literally, and also um, tells the story of the subject in a different way. So photography is a physical endeavor and zooming in many ways is the death of photography. Handy to have a zoom, of course, but um, the act of zooming really should be the last thing we think about when it comes to composition. And almost always I'm sad to report that it appears to be the first thing and it actually effectively ends composition for most people. Okay, so here's some, some of the bells of Birrangma, which are really quite beautiful, and um, lit here with a warm uh, tungsten-like light at the or incandescent-like light at the end of the day, um, and uh, with a stormy sky above. You know, quite a quite a lovely light, and photographed up close of a wide-angle lens, which actually makes whatever's close to the lens larger than life. Now, uh, January the 7th is uh, almost certainly going to be beautiful warm weather in Melbourne, but if it's not, it's not a bad thing. My uh, theory on weather is there's no such thing as bad weather, only badly prepared photographers. Uh, and I've learnt this from experience. <laughs> so uh, we need to dress appropriately if the weather is a bit nasty. Whatever that means, if it's cold, then we need to uh, fleece up um, if you don't want to carry too much weight, then obviously beanies are a great way to keep the, the heat in and warm socks and decent shoes. 
Um, rain coat or umbrella, of course, if it's raining. The tr trouble with an umbrella, though, is it's very hard to take pictures when, you're, um, when you've got an umbrella up. So I would only really use an umbrella myself if I was uh, working off a tripod. Chances of that sort of weather are um, highly unlikely, and at worst it might just be a quick shower. We'll never be more than about 200 metres from uh, cover, uh, and quite often much closer than that. So weather is just not an issue. In fact, if it does rain, it tends to wet surfaces, saturate the colours, and um, tends to bring uh, the world a light. It does a lot of great things to the atmosphere as well, which is great for night photography. So it's not a bad thing at all if there's a little bit of rain. Um, I give, I'm bringing, um, or putting together rather, a very, um, um, very concise uh, ebook which talks about night photography, in particular uh, dealing with the locations we're working at, um, and there'll be lots of tips on how to manage um, uh, different conditions including bringing a small towel uh, in your camera bag just in case the surface of your gear gets wet. So this is made under uh, reasonably poor weather, but you can see, you know, the atmospherics are kind of nice. And the fact that it's not razor sharp because there's so much atmosphere to that the camera's literally um, photographing through, it's irrelevant because the atmosphere is uh, really the determining factor in the picture. So that's looking back on Prince's Bridge from Flinders Street, uh, opposite side of the river to Southgate, South Bank, I'm sorry. A little bit further up, um, in this case, we're photographing um, across to Birarung Ma. So my approach is really to try to make images that explore the journey, in other words, explore um, the, the night itself and um, you know you start making pictures here at a particular time of day you end making pictures in this location a few hours later and the photos can be often sequenced or edited together in such a way that helps tell the story of the journey and that can work really well um, that sort of narrative um, your photos can depict the weather and your response to it as much as the, the buildings and structures that you photograph um, they can explore notions of silence, space and emptiness. And I suppose some of those last images were touching on that. So, you know, this isn't a portfolio of images. They're just a few images from a, um, that I managed to quickly rattle off um, on one of these night photography workshops that I was running. It's always good to um, explore our subjects from different angles and in different ways. And again, pushing the boundaries between realism and abstraction. And, and the step in between those two is suggestion where we can see what it is that's being photographed, but it's starting to, to suggest something other than what it is. Uh, and in doing so, we tend to glimpse new possibilities, new realities, and in the process of doing so, make art. So, you know, it's a wonderful journey to be involved in. This was made with an iPhone, <laughs> and I think it was the first iPhone, so not a great camera. But again, you know, um, <clears throat> if you know how to use the camera um, and understand its limitations, you can make pretty successful pictures. Next time an alien ship uh, or, um, or planet comes um, colliding with uh, Federation Square. iPhone shot again. Okay, so it's a two-hour practical um, workshop. I really don't care if it goes for two and a half or even three hours. Um, I, my energy is uh, almost limitless when it comes to photography, but theoretically we, we start at 8 um, and officially starting at 8.30 where we leave our first location and then really start to explore. Uh, we'll, but we'll get there at 8 o'clock onwards and, and prepare for a sunset shoot. Um, extensive notes in the form of an ebook will be emailed to you prior to the workshop once uh, payment's been uh, processed. So you see here's an example of uh, wet weather photography um, and I would this is a shot of a fountain but I would argue that the way it's been photographed it's actually more a, a, a shot about design or if you like composition. It's a shot about gold, it's a shot about um, texture and pattern repetition of pattern. 
it's a shot of circles and a horizontal line. So this is where, again, photography moves away from reality and it's starting to suggest other things. And I think that's what makes it more, more interesting, both from a um, photographer's point of view, making the images, and of course also from our viewer's point of view. So why would you come along? Well, you'll have fun with like-minded people. You'll be coached by me. Um, and I've been in the photography game for well over 30 years. Uh, you'll be, um, and I have a lot of experience in uh, teaching at all levels. Um, you'll get to take f your photography to a new level. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, we start at 8 p.m. and we'll finish at 10 o'clock officially. But for those who are willing, um, I have no problem if we kick on um, a little bit longer than that. Uh, we'll be in the city area, um, Federation Square, Birrongma, South Bank. Um, never more than about 10 minutes from Flinders Street, Flinders Street Station if you're taking a train home. Uh, it'll be Tuesday, 7th of January, 2014. There's a maximum of 10 people and the price is $88. But if you um, act on this over the next few days, that is up until Christmas, you'll, uh, there's a little bit of a surprise on the price waiting for you. Um, um, just follow the link on my site under our workshop and events. And um, yeah, I've put a little Christmas present in there for you. But you've got to act. So um, also, if you um, had any inquir inquiries, you can contact me at glenn with two ends at travelphotographyguru.com. Um, to confirm your place now, don't forget to book quickly to get that deal. Melbourne at night time is actually quite beautiful under all weather. And one of the great things about it is, um, to make this shot, it was raining at the time. After I made the shot, I had to walk literally two metres and I was undercover, uh, under the bridge itself. So. Um, Lots and lots of opportunities to make great photographs um, regardless of the weather. Here's uh, links to my, um, my site, the travel photogra travelphotographyguru.com. I'm on Facebook, Twitter and also on Google+. And for those who don't know me, that's me. So um, I hope to see folks, as many of you as possible, on the 7th. Um, bookings have already commenced, so places are filling up. If you have any questions at all, you can contact me at glenn at travelphotographyguru.com. All the best and thanks so much for your attention. Bye for now.